In this episode, Ryan pulls back the curtain on some holiday rental guests who are hustlers that do everything they can to travel for free. You know those types of people that are always hustling the system. Ryan spots their deception fast and plays them at their own game. These guests flood the top floor bathroom in their last attempt to get their stay for free. But Ryan has seen this hustle all before and puts the guests in their place. Let me know what you think of this episode by leaving Ryan a review. Just a funny story that I thought I'd share with you guys uh, that, that's just happened right now. So, um, we've got, um, well, one particular holiday rental property we have um, in the city, right by the beach, um, right by the seafront, in fact. Now, we had some, it's a, it's a very good standard. It's a very good standard of a holiday rental property. Everything is clean, tidy, it's impeccable condition inside. Um, it's had a new bathroom upstairs, it's three bedrooms, it's three floors, it's a townhouse. It's in a fantastic location, right by the beach, right by the seafront. And it's at a very, very, very good rate. It's around about, uh, right now, what is it? It's about 250 a night. Right now, it's about 250 a night. So we had a, a family that booked it. Um, they booked it for four nights, okay? So I think they paid around about a thousand pounds or just under a thousand pounds. They booked it for four nights and um, they arrived at the property the other day, um, a few days ago now, and um, about five hours after they arrived at the property. So they've been there for a very long time. Oh no, my parking space is gone. Fuck, that's not good. My parking space is gone. Ah, oh dear. There's some development work going on. I can't park in my bloody space. Okay, so there's, um, yeah. <laughs> Put me on tilt here now. I've, I've arrived at the office and I can't park. Uh, there's a crane here sat in my bloody space. Um, never mind, never mind. We'll work it out. Okay, so uh, they arrived at the property about five hours later. They had a complaint. Now, obviously, complaints are important to us. We deal with complaints um, as quick as we can, but the complaints were along the nature of, um, yeah, in reality, you know, some things we are we are at fault. It was like um, one of the kitchen drawers was loose. The, the, the top was loose. Obviously, our team hadn't noticed that. It probably got broke between the last guests to these guests checking in. Um, and then there was some door wedges because it's hot it's summer the housekeepers actually wedged a coat hanger underneath the door on some of the doors which have self closers um for fire regulations etc just to keep it cool so when they arrived it wasn't boiling hot okay and uh, what was the other thing i think oh there was a light okay there was a light in one of the bathrooms which comes on and after a while one of the bulbs turns off so that was something we were aware of um, we just noticed it and we did let them know that somebody would be coming as one of the bulbs um, after a while turns off. So we apologize for that. That was our mistake. Okay, now, um, yeah, that was within about five hours of them checking in. As soon as they sent that um, or those list of complaints, we said, no worries, we'll send somebody around. When's a good time for us to come around? And we'll just rectify the problem straight away. Okay, we've got a team around there. Half an hour or so, they can be there. Okay, there's always like somebody available. So then we didn't hear anything. Then they came back to us after we sent that message and they came back to us and said, emergency, emergency. There's water pouring through the ceiling. The house is flooding. There's water pouring through the ceiling. So we said, pouring through the ceiling, you know, can you explain? Anyway, there was, there was water pouring through the top floor bathroom ceiling. So we was like, right, we'll send someone around straight away. That's, that's an emergency. So I happen to go around because I'm in the area. So I go around, um, knock on a door, go inside, meet them. There is water dripping through the ceiling. And they say, well, it stopped pouring now, uh, but it's dripping. Let me show you a video. So they show me a video. The video does show it, you know, leaking quite heavily through the ceiling, through the light fitting, etc., etc. And um, it's obviously made the bed wet uh, below, there's a bed directly below. And... Um, yeah, there's stains on the ceiling now and everything else that comes with water coming from a bathroom. So my first reaction is, okay, it slowed down. Um, really sorry to hear this, let's investigate. And they said, yeah, problem with the bathroom upstairs, we can't use it. So all the little issues that we said um, we would repair, just before we're about to get there, 
a massive issue turns up, which is water pouring through the ceiling, okay? So I'm there and I say, I'll tell you what we do. We're gonna run some water, run some tests upstairs just so we can, you know, identify the leak and we can get it fixed. So I go upstairs, turn the bathroom, all the taps on on the sink, the shower, full blast, run the toilet, etc., etc. okay? So, five minutes later, we're downstairs looking, there's no water. 10 minutes later, we're downstairs looking at the ceiling, there's no water. And then, after about 15, 20 minutes, there's not a single drip of water. So now I'm starting to think, we've seen this before. These people are trying to deceive us or trying to deceive booking.com by making these complaints and demanding money back and demanding discounts and demanding free nights and free stays. You know, we have a lot of properties, a lot of guests that stay with us across the course of the year, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of guests. Um, so we've seen this all before, okay? So I say there is no leak now, but obviously there was a leak. So let's go back upstairs and have a look. As I go back upstairs and have a look, Actually, as I first went upstairs, have a look, I could see there's water all over the floor. So I took some pictures and I said to look, with all due respect, there is no leak now like coming from underneath the shower or from any of the pipes, which would imply that any water that's gone over the walk-in low profile shower tray is what the problem is. It's on the floor and then it's leaking downstairs. Now, they didn't like that at all, trying to imply that I'm implying that they've flooded the place. Then they start to say, well, we're not paying if there's any damage. And then there's like children everywhere. They've got about six children. Now, that's not a problem at all. It's a family home. But because they've got about six children everywhere, they're all running in and out saying, yeah, we had a shower. We was all in the shower playing. And then the water comes. So basically what's happened is the kids are in the shower. The water's come over the shower tray, flooded the bathroom floor downstairs ceiling and now it's all over the bed so that's nothing to do with us in that sense but they are horrible people they're complaining they're moaning they're on the phone to booking.com while i'm there and i'm saying well i'm here to sort it out so do you want me to leave if you're on the phone to them because all they do is call us but i'm the one that's here now to help to get it fixed so you know what do you want to do anyway they're just complaining 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 um complaining 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 non-stop and um yeah it just goes on and on and on and on so in the end i say look we can get somebody to deliver some more towels, obviously, so when you have a shower, um, if the children have a shower, then you can um, obviously use them just to mop up any excess water, etc. And um, anything else we'll do. So the drawer, we'll come back tomorrow to do this. This is about seven, eight o'clock at night. I say tomorrow we'll come back while you're out. The maintenance team, they'll fix the drawer, they'll remove the coat hangers, and they'll fix the light. Is there anything else you want us to do? Um, that's it, okay? So I leave and I just say, I'm just a maintenance contractor. I run the maintenance company, okay? It's not my building, it's not my house, you know, because even though it is my house, um, there's massive problems when you're the owner or you're, the buck stops with you. When they're in front of you, they do not leave you alone. They're relentless, they're demanding. They want this, they want that. And they feel they can push you everywhere and leverage everything. And then they want to argue and then it turns into a bigger problem, so it's easier um, from experience, just to deflect it to somebody else. Uh, I'll talk to the office. Uh, I'll come back to you and see what they say. I'm just a contractor that deals in the maintenance, the maintenance company. Anyway, the plot thickens because um, as I leave, they're looking out of the window and they see me leaving in a Bentley Continental GT. Now, it doesn't, you know, does the maintenance man have a... 150,000, 160,000 pound car. Maybe, if it's got a very, 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 very successful company. Um, but does the owner of the property company, the investment company, um, the properties, the holiday rentals, etc., etc., what's the likelihood that they may have the Bentley Continental GT? Um, so they're looking out the window and they see me leaving, uh, jump into the Bentley. Okay, so that's like red rag to a ball. Anyway, later that evening, they send another complaint, a bigger complaint. More things are just coming out of nowhere. Just new things. This is not working. That's broken. This is that. The leak. What are you doing about the leak? It's like the same complaint is being sent to us again. And then it goes to booking.com. And then it goes to us by email. It's going everywhere. So we're just responding with the same thing to booking.com to them. We spoke to you about this earlier today. We've sent somebody around already. There is no leak now, but there was a leak 
running over the shower tray. We've agreed to come back tomorrow to change the light bulb, put some screws in the front drawer cover, and remove the coat hangers and anything else that you ask for. Okay. Through the night, there's more complaints. Then the next morning, there's even more complaints. Now, it's getting to the point that we know these people are just serial complainers. They're trying to take advantage, manipulate the system, manipulate Booking.com with all of these complaints and pictures that they fabricated by... Um, obviously, the shower is running over the shower tray, soaking the bathroom floor and coming through the light fitting. So it looks very, 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 very bad when you just record a one-sided video showing water pouring through the ceiling. But the reality is they've let the shower tray overrun. They've overfilled it and it's pouring through the ceiling because of them, okay? So it looks very bad when Booking.com see it. So Booking.com contacted us. We're explaining the situation. It's all in hand and they flooded it, etc. and anything else. There we go. Okay, so then we have to get some evidence together from our pictures, our videos to send to booking.com, file a misconduct report to say that obviously they have deliberately done this and they just keep demanding their money back. We want all of our money back and we want to stay for free. This is on the first day. What would you want? What do you like? We want all of our money back and we want to stay for free. So we know that they're just trying to hustle us. They're just serial complainers that probably stay in hotels and apartments for free probably go to restaurants and complain that there's hair in the food and get the food for free you know all of those things this these are the people the type of family i'm not going to say what nationality they are because i don't want to typecast them however they are of a nationality which are known for doing this okay i'll let you guys fill in the gaps they are of a nationality that's known for doing this okay let me step in real quick I share a ton of business and investment tactics on this show. And it's a shame that there's no interaction on a platform like this, which is why I've created a Facebook community group called Property Crash Course, where I get to answer all of your questions. So you just post a deal or post a question and I'll show you where the money is in your deal or answer your question for you. So help me to help you and your business right now by asking me anything you need help with. Does that sound fair? Just go to Facebook and then search the groups and then type in property crash course. Now, that's not my opinion, that's the world. It's not my opinion, it's the world. Okay, so um, we go back the next day. We send the guy in, electrician, he's done the work, he's changed the light bulb, send the handyman in, he's fixed the front of the drawer and he's done the other bits and they attack him. They attack both of our handymen, like attacking them verbally, shouting, screaming, I need this, that, this is not right and this is broken. And they, in the end they say, you need to calm down. You just need to calm down. This is the maintenance people. They were laughing afterwards, telling us what happened, they're shouting and screaming. I said, yeah, they're horrible, horrible people. Okay. Anyway, so they leave. They fixed all the work. And then we get more complaints that afternoon about this, about that, about something else. And then we want our money back. We want to stay for free. And we just reminded them on the first day when you checked in and you wasn't happy. Like we always do. If you're not happy, we offer you 100% refund with no cancellation fees. If you're not happy with what, whatever we're going to do to rectify the situation, as long as you leave. As long as you leave and don't stay, we will give you a 100% refund which we offered them. They didn't accept it. They said they're happy to stay. After they've stayed, then they're complaining, demanding money back and demanding to stay for free. So they know exactly what they're doing. In the meantime, we've got a dozen phone calls from booking.com calling us about this, calling us about that, this complaint, that complaint, you know, just nonstop relentless. So it gets to the point where I say, right, they need a firm, stern email just to let them know what the position is. So I respond and say, right, we sent the guys around to do the work that you asked us to do, which is usual wear and tear on a large holiday home. But we did it straight away the next day. We were there within half an hour when you had a problem. We offered you a full refund, you didn't accept it, you've now stayed, now you're demanding your money back, and these new complaints are coming up every single day. Also, there's no evidence that there's a leak due to our own fault in the bathroom, which does mean that you flooded the bathroom, which means that you've just flooded the bathroom so because you flooded the bathroom now the ceiling is wet below there's stains on the ceiling and obviously there's water in the electrics so we're seeking 
um, some quotes to get that repaired. And we'll come back to you when we have the costs because you've deliberately, or, you know, due to your own negligence, you flooded the ceiling, um, which isn't a leak. It's just abusing the bathroom and the, the sanitary wear. And then we say, from our experience, this is drafted in a very... Um, a particular way that it doesn't imply it's them, but it says that it could be them. From our experience, um, in multiple properties, we do have some people over time that stay and they demand their money back and they want to stay for free, some people. Um, so we're not saying that this is you guys at all, don't get us wrong. However, because we have lots of properties and hotels, we do get a pattern of people that are serial complainers, complain about everything, we fix everything, but they still complain about everything. They don't accept our money back offer on the first day. They decide to stay, so it's like accepting the property, and then they demand their money back at the end of the trip and during the trip. So we have a zero tolerance policy against that, and we have a zero tolerance policy for compensation. So just getting that out of the way. Also, we've had to file a misconduct report um, about you um, because Obviously, you flooded the, the ceiling, caused some damage. Um, so we're going to look into getting that repaired because they're trying to claim money from us. So this is just to you know, remind them of the process and how serious this is and how we're not taking any crap because they've just been very, 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 very unreasonable. Anyway, the last day of their trip, which is the checkout, okay, which is today. I've just left the property. Now, they know that I'm the owner of the property um, or they've guessed. Bentley outside, I come round each time, bloody, you know, stupid car, and um, so they more or less know. So today, the linen company, we've just gone over to a brand new linen company to deliver linen to all of our um, apartments and houses, etc. So they call me and say, yeah, we're just trying to find the property, can you help? I'm like, sure, I'll meet you there, which one? Out of all of the properties they're delivering to today, the first one they need to drop something off at, which is about 9.45 in the morning, and checkout is 10, is that property. So I pull up in the road, in the bloody Bentley, outside, park it, linen company pulls up, I think we can get in, get out before anybody sees us. And um, we've parked, as we're taking the bags in, I'm showing the guy where the cupboards is, etc. They come out of the house. So I go into the back of the garage, try to stay out of the way. I can hear their voice, them looking around and saying, hold on a minute, is this the guy? Is that the guy? Is this the guy? Is that the guy? Is that his car? I can see his car. Where is he? And I'm like, oh no, I'm in the back of the garage. Oh no. So then they come into the garage because the linen man is standing there and he can't get in. So I have to come out and say, hello, can you let the guy pass? He's trying to drop some stuff off. He's got a very tight schedule. And they're like, oh, you. I'm like, uh, yeah, can I help? They're like, right. We're not happy about this, we're not happy about that, we're not happy about this, we want our money back, and this and that, and that's not right, and there was a leak, and you said there wasn't a leak, and I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. And they're like saying, you're the owner, and I'm like, no, no, I'm not the owner, this is not my house. The linen man standing there, who knows this is my property, they're complaining, I'm in this tight little garage, all the kids are there, they're there, the husband, the wife, they're shouting, they're screaming, in the street, it's busy, it's the hustle and bustle, it's quarters 10 in the morning, I'm like, oh my God. Oh dear, how can we bring this to an end? And I'm still standing there saying, I'm not the owner, it's not my company. Because it's the easiest way. I'm the contractor, I own the contractor company. We do the work, okay? And guess what? On my bloody shirt, on my bloody shirt, guess what I've got? Otto. O-T-T-O. I've got my shirts from German Street in London, branded with my fucking company name. Branded. So I'm trying to hover behind the car... In, with the wing mirror, so in their eye line, so as they're talking to me, I'm at the back of the garage, but the wing mirror is in the way, so I'm trying to hide this thing on my shirt, that fucking says, I am Otto, the owner of the bloody company, because what contractor would wear a Fribbin Otto t-shirt, which is a jump uh, shirt, white shirt, which is completely separate to the property company. Anyway, so they're still arguing and shouting and screaming, I just say, look, the best thing is you just reply to whoever you've been communicating with in writing to talk to them, they will work it out with you, okay? And we're in a very tight schedule, we've got to go. So look at that, embarrassing situation. Um, nearly got um, hustled. <laughs> nearly got hustled. Embarrassing situation. And um, hopefully I can get in here. I need to park. There we go. I think I've got my space back. I think I've got my space back. 
So yeah, embarrassing situation. Um, I think we managed to resolve it. Um, serial complainers trying to get stuff for free. And um, yeah, it's just not right. So these are the trials and tribulations, the ups and downs of having uh, people staying in your property. Some are genuine, some are nice, most of them are. But some of them are very demanding. They try to cause damage deliberately, flooding bathrooms to try and get their trip completely free. And um, that's just not right. So that's my little rant and ramble for you guys this morning. Enjoy. He's a number one Amazon bestseller. He's an NLP manipulator. He's a property course seller. He's a Lamborghini driving multi-millionaire property guru. Forget that same old boring I am me, me, me narcissistic podcast format because nobody gives a f***. This podcast is all about you. So I'm taking these few seconds to thank you for subscribing, to thank you for leaving your five-star reviews, and thank you for sharing this show with all of your friends. My team and I will keep bringing you these episodes and answering all of your burning questions in my Facebook community group called Property Crash Course. If you can just keep telling all of your friends about this show.